um, if you if your idea sort of relies on it being absolutely secret until the last moment, it's probably not a very good idea. Like you're <laughs> yes, it, absolutely, absolutely. So. Uh, um, like you, you need you need something you, you need some type of advantage in the marketplace other than just it being an utter secret until the last moment because even if you keep it secret to the last moment you're going to have one short period of opportunity to make some uh, profit off of that and then you're going to start having competitors flood into the marketplace who you have no apparent uh, advantage over right like the moose the first mover advantage is not a huge advantage it's there but it's not uh it's not like a guaranteed payday or anything like that absolutely and i think that fear is based on the myth of entrepreneurship as the you know bright idea um whereas really you know it's there's so much to do with really understanding and learning from selling and learning from the marketplace the bright idea is is uh you know it, it it's a bit of a myth that Successful entrepreneurs kind of have this incredible light bulb going off in the head moment where they come up with some incredible innovation. There's so many tiny little innovations and learning as you go that I think uh, the fear is is kind of um, unfounded. Um, and you read about you read about inventors, right? And people, the person that invented the light bulb and the rat trap and created you know better rat trap. And I remember hearing a, a This American Life story where they just talked about all these people who were um, you know, still in modern times, like trying to reinvent new rat traps. And it was sort of a metaphor for these people spinning their wheels, um, doing things that there was no demand for. Um, so there's a huge difference between someone ha who has a bright idea and someone who then brings that to the marketplace, bringing it to the marketplace. It requires a tremendous amount of talent and effort and study. And it's a whole skill unto itself, right? So there's a huge gap between the genesis of an idea and then making it successfully sold in a marketplace. Mm, absolutely. The other thing that the people write about in terms of their concerns or worries about doing a, a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding project is the reputational risk of like, well, you know, what happens if we launch this and we don't reach our target? And, you know, wh what were your thoughts about that when you decided to set uh, your Kickstarter up? Um, I, I think you know in terms of reputation i guess i wasn't too i wasn't too afraid of reputation like the worst case scenario is um uh if we don't if we didn't hit our our goal for the thing then it just it doesn't go through and no one gets charged money and uh it, to me it's not a big deal i mean i'm sure there are some people that could um you know become haters about that but you know whatever like it's it's just it would have been a, a project that we tried to we attempt in and, and no one really got burned in the process, um, and really the 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 damp to me, in my mind the damage that could happen to our reputation would be if it goes through successfully. People do pay their money, and then for some reason we weren't able to deliver on our on our product. I don't right. I, I don't have much fears of that, but that has nothing to do with crowdfunding in particular. That would be um, you know equally applicable, I think, to uh, non crowdfunding. Although yeah. I guess I, I guess you could say like um, uh, th there could be certain projects or services or, or whatever where um, people might promise to do a certain thing and the creator doesn't have necessarily a good reason to believe that they will be able to follow through on the promise and that can certainly be sticky. I've certainly heard of uh, Kickstarter projects and crowdfunding projects where it went through. And then, for some reason, the creator wasn't able to deliver on it. But for our particular product, that wasn't. It's not a really big concern for me. Yeah, I think the other thing is that you know, there's no way around the risk of failure in entrepreneurship anyway. I mean, obviously, even if you weren't getting money externally, you put up if you put up your goods and, and try and sell, and people are not interested, and you have to fold the business. That's kind of the same thing. So it just seems to me like. If it's not going to work, it's better to reach that conclusion sooner than later. And in some ways, if Kickstarter actually, if a crowdfunded project like this actually speeds up learning whether or not people are willing to buy your product, then that's all for the good. Right. Yeah, I agree with that assessment. So I wonder, what do you think in terms of your experience um, so far have been the real sort of lessons learned? And what would you do differently that if people are interested uh, you, you know, they can learn from your experience uh, if they want to get into doing a crowdfunding project. So I think in terms of selling, 
the we we definitely notice some important patterns and i'm still sort of processing this information and in the future i'm hoping to actually write a blog post um to explain more in detail about how i think people can reproduce what we did in a more successful way but part of the information that we've gleaned so far is that the people who were most likely to support us to purchase our products and so forth were friends of ours like and and for us that meant like people who are on our Facebook friends list and both Andrew and I are relatively like picky about who we put on our friends list we're not the type of people that just have 5000 random people so there was some kind of emotional investment for the people that jumped on board real quick and were the most enthusiastic about the project right and beyond those friends i think the people who were the most interested were the people that had extremely relevant interests, um, which is what you would expect. Now, another group of people that we were sort of hoping we might get some help from were kind of minor celebrities related to our product. So uh, the T-shirt that we're selling through our Kickstarter is um, a Borders Are Imaginary Lines T-shirt which I think you could basically say is sort of a, a voluntarism or anarchist or um, sort of anti-immigration sort of themed T-shirt. And so we, be leading up to the crowdfunding... Or anti-immigration uh, control, to be more specific. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. right. Uh, and so, um, so leading up to the crowdfunding website, we identified about you know, 50, 70, 100 people who were sort of minor celebrities in this area that had um, uh, sort of clout with their social circles. And we we messaged them once the project went live. And the vast majority of those people didn't even bother to click to look at the Kickstarter, um, let alone, you know, respond or try to help us out in any way. So um, I, I think that... Yeah, I definitely learned something from that. Um, that we there's, we certainly couldn't have expected automatically any kind of assistance from these uh, people who are already sort of established in their social communities. Um, really, for us, it was about putting in um, tons of sort of manual labor in contacting people. And I mean, we probably sent about a thousand different individuals messages through Facebook, honestly. And wow. yeah, and, and since we, the, the feedback that we were getting from people who were receiving these messages was overwhelmingly positive and appreciative. Um, and so we didn't feel like we were spamming people. We felt like, okay, we're letting people know about this, um, this product that they might be at least peripherally interested in whether they decide to purchase it or not. Um, so yeah, we we never got to the point where the project sort of went viral and took off and we were sort of able to sit back and relax and, and let it um, just sort of reap in the rewards uh, in and of itself. So if I were going to do it again, I think I would try to study some more about how to achieve more virality in the project if, it, if it's even possible. I mean, there's no way to sort of guarantee it, but... Um, that certainly would have made the fundraising quite a bit easier. Yeah, what I hear from what you're saying is that you, you really wanted to um, kind of get uh, what's referred to, I think it's, um, people some, come, sometimes call this mavens, you know, people who will who have connected to a lot of people and can potentially spread the word about your product. And it sounds like you, you want to look in future to a way to, to engage them earlier so that you can get more more um viral uh earlier on um which I, I can definitely see how that would help the the other thing i wanted to just ask you is that you mentioned facebook and it sounds like you've really concentrated on facebook um as your sort of channel for outreach is that right and what what are your experiences of facebook versus google plus versus anything else and emails direct emails or what you know what what's worked for you and what hasn't so far yeah, I would say um, the vast majority of what we did in terms of marketing happened through Facebook as sort of a platform to make that happen. And um, part of that is because 
both Andrew and I personally, this is the social network that we, the software that we tend to use the most. It's also the most popular for the people who share interests re- relevant to the, our Kickstarter. And it's the one that happens, you know, that, that we use to talk to friends that would be helpful and so forth. So um, I don't know that there's any necessarily anything super magical about Facebook, but certainly for our, for, for us personally and um, relevant to the, the topics that we're sort of reaching people about, it was the platform of choice. Um, and so uh, Facebook is really convenient for us telling our friends about the project and then allowing our friends to tell their friends very quickly and conveniently about the project as well. There are some uh, catches to that. I mean, Facebook is like, it's the it's all based on this sort of um, stream of information. And it's not like, um, it's not a one-to-one thing where you put out a message and you can be sure that each one of your friends is going to receive it and so forth. There's all these algorithms and and uh, subtleties of how people end up seeing the information so right. you have to kind of figure out how to navigate that if you're going to use facebook um but still it, it worked out well for us and the other thing that's going on in facebook is facebook has groups and pages and these are way of ways of aggregating people with joint interests so you know for instance we were able to identify a handful of pages and groups and, uh, with people that are, you know, directly, they have interests that are directly related to the product that we're trying to sell. And then at that point, we can sort of uh, reach out to the group or reach out to individuals in that group and let them know about what we're doing. Right, right. So you you uh, deliberately sought out relevant communities and pages or uh, groups and pages and posted in them to say, uh, to tell people about your project. Right, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm very, very uh, happy to be a, a backer of this Kickstarter, and I think what you're doing is is really uh, great. And I know that you're not yet um, completely. The, the timeline is you've got another how many days? Is it eight or nine? Yeah, I think we have uh, eight days left. Cool. And you're how close are you to funding? I think we're around ninety ninety five percent or somewhere. So we're, we're we're up there, but not quite. Um, through yet and and of course we we don't want to just hit um a hundred percent we'd like to go a little bit above it because there's always the possibility that people will sort of cancel their pledges at the last moment and so forth so that's a good point yeah absolutely well i i think it would be really interesting also for people who listen to voluntary life to hear um your your vision for um both for this t-shirt and for robber baron swag so why don't you summarize you know why people should uh should fund your kickstarter yeah, well, I think our vision for Robert Barron swag is like 2000, 2013 is going to be a big year for philosophy, for liberty, for volunteerism, all these kind of things. Um, it's really, uh, it's it's certainly not mainstream yet, but it's it's really growing. Um, I'm seeing a whole lot of social growth and, and connections between people with these topics and more organization and more businesses and so forth. And uh, an issue that we've identified is that um, people often use their clothing and apparel to try and express their values to other people to get new conversations started or just to sort of convey their values to other people that um, are around to them that have similar goals and let them know like, hey, I'm sort of, I'm a brethren, you know, voluntarist or, or libertarian or whatever. And, um, so there's a lot of apparel that's already out there, but it's all sort of, um, it's all sort of disorganized. It's not made by one, you know, uh, one clothing company. It's, it's, uh, people that have put out spread shirt, you know, a spread shirt t-shirt here and a Zazzle shirt there and so forth. So we're really looking to kind of up the quality and get the, the traction that comes with having a concerted effort working towards that rather than just having people, um, put out a million different t-shirts all over the place. Um, so we're look, we're looking to make basically premium apparel uh, clothing, so that uh, in the in the areas of philosophy and volunteerism and so forth. So we started off with a volunteerism T-shirt. Um, it's a Borders Imaginary Lines T-shirt. We hired a philosopher who's a graphic designer who did a really beautiful job making the the graphic and so forth. 
And so that's going to, that's our first sort of politically themed t-shirt, but we'll be doing all, all kinds of other philosophical t-shirts in the future. And so I think if people want to see, if they want to see philosophy and liberty becoming more stream, more mainstream, um, more hip, more cool, then this is a type of project that's, that's really going to help with that. And even if they're not into volunteers in particular, if they're interested in, you know, uh, religious topics or unschooling or Bitcoin or whatever, we're going to be doing that stuff as well. And so if they want to kick in a few bucks towards our, our project, that's going to help us um, achieve those things sooner as well. Cool. And I, I will say that I think the first T-shirt is a beautiful design. It's really, really nice, the graphic. Um, so I can see what you're doing in terms of, you know, wanting to have uh, something, a, a T-shirts with a message with purpose, but also not just, you know, big fat fonts and uh, <laughs> which is kind of the history of those kind of um, T-shirts with a purpose is that they generally tend to look a little bit um, in your face and, and, and uh, bland typography, but you're clearly going for something that looks a, a, a lot more stylish. Yeah, and I think that just it makes it easier for people to um, to convey their values in this particular format. It, it kind of sucks if you're really passionate about something and you want to you want to share it with people, but the aesthetic presentation of that thing is kind of dingy and not very appealing. It makes you kind of hesitate about sharing that with other people, and it makes it you know, it makes it harder for you to sell it to other people. So we're just looking to help out with that that problem. Awesome. Well, where can people find out um, how to more about Robert Baron Swag and how do they fund you? How does how does someone interested in this um, support your Kickstarter? Well, the the easiest way to do it is to go to Kickstarter.com, and you can do a search for our Kickstarter Kickstarter project. Um, the The name of the Kickstarter is "Wear Your Heart on Your Sleeve: T-shirts for Philosophers." And uh, you could just do a search for Robber Baron, or um, even if you just do a search for a robber, there's just a couple products that have the word robber in them. Uh, Baron is with one R in Baron. And uh, so that's, that will get you to our Kickstarter campaign where you can see, you know, get some information about our company and you can watch our video to explain what, why we're doing the Kickstarter and what's going on with that and see the t-shirts and all that good stuff and contribute if you want. And um, probably the, the best place to, um, to get in, to be connected with us and keep getting updates from us right now is our Facebook page. Um, you can go on facebook.com and do a search for Robert Baron swag there and to like our page. And we're putting out um, enjoyable memes and videos and information, all kinds of stuff through that page. So uh, that's a good place to connect with us as well. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Christoph. It's been a real pleasure um, hearing about your project and talking about crowdfunding in general. Yeah, it was good fun. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.